Hello everybody, it's Sanier, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, I want to talk about the latest earnings report from CRISPR Therapeutics. Now, today's video is going to be a little bit special guys, I don't have video camera here. The reason why is I do have the webcam, but uh, the quality here of lighting is not that good and I said, you know what, uh, this is going to probably be my first video since I started this channel without actually having my webcam on, we'll see how you guys like it but uh, I mean really what matters is what you know verbally what I'm explaining here as we're looking at it on the screen right I don't think my face mattered that much but uh, so you're gonna have to bear with me as here I'm in Montreal here for the week here I think the next few videos will be without me with a video camera but I think I think we'll make it uh, we'll adapt I think it will be fine and we'll be back in our regular schedule next week of course I want to apologize for not making videos daily basis guys like I mentioned in a in a tweet there that uh, you know I've been trying to you know take a little bit of time off here more about uh, trying to be uh, just trying to refresh myself here just trying to give a little bit of time off here it's nothing really major it's just you know sometimes it gets a little bit taxing on the body to make, start making videos on a daily basis and then you sort of lose your touch so I think it's always a good idea to uh, step back here and um, and just, you know, refresh yourself, do other things than, you know, your YouTube videos as usual. And I think anybody that's done YouTube videos knows exactly what I'm talking about. So content creation is not the same ball game as, you know, as your regular work where, you know, you keep putting work in and you keep getting whatever you want out of it. You know, it's a different ball game, right? But uh, so anyways, here, year tweet here this on yesterday. And I said, you know what, let's go over this tweet thread because I think it's uh, pretty important. Um, again, shout out to year for his amazing work. So this was, of course, uh, end of uh, t uh, their t form 10K here, uh, latest quartering, quarter of 2022 uh, report from CRISPR Therapeutics. They gave out the latest earnings report. And uh, obviously, the most important part here is they're waiting for the US FDA to give their response for end of Q1 2023, potentially reaching the market in 2023. Um, this is for CPK001. Um, they also submitted uh, the f their press release earlier in January that they're getting regulatory submissions for Exacel, uh, for uh, beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease in U EU and the UK. Uh, we saw that in early part of January. Uh, we made a video on it, or at least I thought I made a video. Maybe I didn't, but uh, I guess here it is, I guess, for now. Um, CRISPR Therapeutics main program, CTA001. I mean, I don't have to go through the generics here. Everybody knows what's uh, happening here. Uh, what's amazing here is that they've actually had 42 out of 44 for uh, uh, for uh, for beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease 31 31 I didn't know that I think they updated these figures here so they obviously dosed uh, more patients here uh, as you can see here from this graph uh, I don't know if you guys can see the full screen here but 40 uh, there's only two more remaining patients but uh, looks like 89% reduction in transfusion volume. I mean, this is these the data is just amazing, right? This is straight what the FDA should be looking at. I mean, this graph alone should be what the FDA should be putting the most focus on. But uh, nothing remarkable here, other than the fact that we already knew that these were amazing results. Uh, so nothing new here, as per se. But obviously, always refreshing to see how amazing the data is. Uh, so uh, they did promote promote the last December in the ASH 2022 CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex. Of course, uh, uh, they've been going around talking about this program. Vertex actually mentioned one of their highlights in their latest earnings report last month. We covered in this video, if you guys remember, so uh, in this channel rather. So, uh, so we'll see where it goes, guys. We'll see how it goes. You can see the potential. Uh, market for in vivo delivery of course this is in vivo so that's not what they're working on right now but it's still a long-term goal 100,000 plus 350 I would argue it's a lot more than that I think we're talking the millions in my opinion but um, I digress here so their second program cart CTX 0 uh, 110 of course they're in the CAR-T space there um, I would not say this program has been that much of a you know outstanding program compared to what CRISPR therapeutics first program is all about but I think it's still getting some uh, some uh, average slasher I think average data is what most people in the space sort of uh, sort of commenting here here saying shown good results yeah I mean I guess average data is off we see good results I mean one or two patient cured is an amazing story right period I mean there, there shouldn't be there shouldn't be anything short than that statement right but obviously 
if you want a program to be the key here is whether this program could be FD approved and I mean you, you want to see less red dots here right so I mean it's part of the game I guess but man it's 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 a tough it's a tough ball game I, I really think it's a tough thing uh, shout out to everybody in the space in the CAR T space it's it's a tough space uh, so CTX one one zero is obviously owned wholly owned by the company. So you know whether or not they partner up, that really depends on how amazing the data is uh, going forward. And of course CTX one one two, the next generation CRISPR Cas uh, CAR T uh, targeting CD nineteen plus B cell malignancies. Uh, we're looking at the start of clinical trials. Uh, so maybe that's going to be their next generation. There is CTX one three zero, which we haven't covered in this channel, but. Um, the U.S. FDA has granted RMAT designation for that back in September, so obviously things are looking good, uh, showing good safety profile, so control rate. Uh, so you're looking at a, a, a complete response of only 30%. I think 30% is about the average. From my understanding, 30 to 40% is what the average is in the space, so anything better than that will be amazing results in my opinion, but uh, yeah. So new collaboration, MoFit News for developing, what's MoFit News? Let's take a look. It's a center, okay, so it's a global care for developing new autologous CAR, CAR T, CAR T, rather, uh, a CAR T targeting CD83 AML. Okay, so they're working on some things here with this uh, center, facility center, healthcare. Uh, Visite and CRISPR have three programs, VCTX210, 211 and 212 and will be both for diabetes and clinical data for the night 18 20 14 months but the first program here 210 we actually had that back in like entered clinical in november 2021 right we have yet to get any data and it was suspected that this program would most likely fail in order for 211 and 212 to be a success but uh, i'm gonna take a guess since we not have not gotten a single data for 210 this is pretty much a failure in terms of program when you talk about data what expectation the data was uh so i guess we'll have to wait for 211 212 i'm a little bit disappointed that about data but again i sort of figured as much when we didn't get data for because in the diabetes space you're supposed to be getting data within like the next two to three months i believe but because they never gave us data in 2022 i sort of figured that this this program was basically then on then, uh, then on arrival at that point, right? We we covered in a video, if you guys remember, that Chris Tommy made a couple of comments on that, but I'll let you guys dive into that if you're curious. Uh, of course, they're working on CTX310, which is actually, I think this is the first time they're officially calling this out as a slide here, potential for combination therapy across three targets. This is, of course, in the heart disease space, so uh, this is something they've announced and uh, really, really excited, but again, a little bit early here, but this is a direct competition to Verve Therapeutics. Uh, and I think it's a good time to start this program considering Verve 101 is actually cur currently on the FDA hold right now. So that's that. So the company is working about $2.25, $2.24 billion in cash right now in the balance sheet. So steady balance sheet, but we'll see where we go from there. Uh, they're working on several things, this company. There's also CRISPR X, as they, they mentioned recently. We'll see where we go with that. Um, but I think the in vivo side of things, the heart disease side of things, the re regenerative medicine, which of course we're talking about diabetes, and of course the immunology here, of course we're talking about CAR T cells. This company has things going on for them. We'll see where we go from there. I mean, you know, the guys take it things step by step, you know, step by step, you know, 2023 is all about CRISPR therapeutics, CTA001. Once we get that out of the door in the markets, I think it's dominoes effect. I think there's gonna be many winners in this space. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll see where we go from there. I'll end this video like this, guys. Hopefully, you guys are having a beautiful Sunday. Let me know in the comments, of guys, what do you guys think about Chris Therapeutics and the learnings, latest earnings report? And let me know what you guys think about this latest format with no webcam. Uh, are you enjoying it? Do you think it's uh, losing focus? Let me know, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.